Hi everyone, my name is Parul. Welcome to my channel Parul English Lab. In today's video, we will learn about verbs and different types of verbs. So, let's get started. So, what are verbs? Verbs are action words. Okay, so any action like sleep, dance, teach, these all are actions. So, action words are verbs. This we all know. Okay, we have different types of verbs here. Main and helping verbs, regular and irregular verbs, transitive and intransitive verbs, stative and dynamic verbs. Stative and dynamic verbs we already have done. I have made a video on this and if you have not watched it yet, then I will share the link in description box and you can go through it. Okay. So in this video, I'll be covering main and helping verbs, regular and irregular verbs, transitive and intransitive verbs. Let's start with main and helping verbs. So we know what are main verbs. Main verbs are the verbs which describe an action or state. We have done it already. We know that there are dynamic and stative verbs. Dynamic verbs are verbs which describe an action and stative verbs are verbs which describe a state. They both are main verbs. So main verbs, they are very important and they can stand alone, but sometimes they need a helping verb to complete a sentence or to give a meaning to the sentence, okay? Now, on the other hand, helping verbs are those verbs which help the main verb to complete a sentence. They are used for different kind of sentences like negative, positive and interrogative. Okay, so whenever we have to make these kind of sentences, we need helping verbs. How? Let's take a look. So, three very important helping verbs are to be verbs, do and have. When I say to be verbs, so they have different forms like is, am, are, was, were, being, be, been. These all are different forms of to be verbs. Okay. Now do and have. Do and have these verbs can be used as helping verbs and sometimes as the main verb also. Depending upon the sentence, we will talk about it later. Okay. So here I have written uh, uh, their usage with different persons. Okay. I, we, these are all first person, second person and third person. We have done it already so i we you he she it they okay now with i to be verb am am will come in present this is present tense i am and past tense i was for do for the verb do i do i did in past tense then i have and i had in present it is have in past it is had okay Next is we. So with we, we will use in present are and in past were. Okay. We do, past did. We have, we had. So in past tense, for the verb do and have, the forms of do and have in past is did and had. Okay. Everywhere it is did and had, if you can see. So the change is with do. Okay. You do this is singular and plural we know that second person is always you say in singular also and in plural as well okay then he she it you use is then do instead of do we use does and then has not have we have done it earlier uh, while making negative sentences in simple present tense we use don't or doesn't or do not or does not okay so with he she it we use does and does not and with others like i you we they we use do not okay so same is the case over here he she it does and for have he she it has they are they do they have okay and for past they were they did they had Basically, this is a table which shows the usage, correct usage of these verbs with different subjects. Okay. Now, let's look at some sentences here. 
फर्स्ट इज जेम्स इज वॉचिंग अ मूवी ओके नाउ हियर जेम्स इज अ सब्जेक्ट ओके इट्स अ सब्जेक्ट नाउ द मेन वर्ब फर्स्ट लुक फॉर द मेन वर्ब द मेन वर्ब इज द एक्शन विच इज हैपनिंग इन दिस इंटेंस वॉच दिस इज द मेन वर्ब ओके एंड देन द हेल्पिंग वर्ब इज this because if i make a sentence without the helping verb james watching a movie that is grammatically incorrect and it doesn't have a meaning okay so sometimes a main verb needs a helping verb to give the meaning to the sentence or to complete the sentence okay so here this is a helping verb okay now let's look at the second example they are dancing okay so they is the subject and this is the main verb okay and this is the helping verb do you like chocolates it's a question it's an interrogative sentence okay to frame an interrogative sentence or to frame a question we need the helping verb otherwise we cannot make an interrogative sentence okay so here we need a helping verb so you is the subject okay like is main verb here this is an object we have done this also and helping verb is do okay so this is a helping verb now let's look at the negative sentence also don't you like chocolates again here helping verb this is basically do not so do is the verb not is not the verb okay so you is the subject like is again main verb and this is object okay i don't work on saturday so i is the subject do is helping verb and work is the main verb okay i have met him so here we have done they are so are is a to be verb okay and do also we have seen to make negative sentences and interrogative sentences we need do okay now let's see how we use have as a helping verb i have met him so main verb is met here this is the main verb i is the subject and have is a helping verb next is interrogative have you visited her so have is a helping verb and you is the subject visited is the main verb okay now we have done tenses already we know that in perfect forms or perfect continuous we use have okay we use this verb as an helping verb has been have been had been these all are help, helping verbs because we have a main verb in these kind of sentences okay so the verbs which are used to help the main verb are called helping verbs max has been running okay so this is a subject has been is a helping verb here and running is the main verb she will be dancing okay so again will be again a form of helping verb only so she is the subject will be is helping verb and dancing is main verb okay he will meet me so main action first you find out the main verb okay then it becomes easier to find the helping verb he subject will is the helping verb and meet is the main verb buddy will have eaten the chicken so buddy is the subject will have helping verb and eaten is the main verb tia had been exercising so you you can see these all are this is future perfect will have eaten tia had been exercising this is past perfect continuous and she will be dancing future continuous he will meet me simple future max has been running present perfect continuous okay so these helping verbs are used in different tenses okay tia had been exercising tia is the subject had been is a helping verb exercising is the main verb okay so i hope this structure is clear to you you can make out easily which is the main verb which are the helping verbs in the sentence okay now i want to give you one more example as i told you earlier that do and have can work as a main verb or 
as helping verbs. So we have seen how we can use do and have as helping verbs okay while making negative sentences while making interrogative sentences or in perfect or perfect continuous tenses we use has or have okay now do and have how they can be used as main verb let's see that okay here we have two sentences he is doing his work okay so here the helping verb is this this is the helping verb and the main verb is doing this is the main verb okay because we know this is present continuous subject plus smr plus first form of the main verb okay so here do is not a helping verb rather it is a main verb okay next sentence i am doing the dishes so in this sentence the main verb is do and the helping verb is am this is the helping verb okay so this way do can be used as a main verb as well as a helping verb when we are making negative or interrogative sentences okay i don't don't you do i so these kind of sentences here we can see how have verb have can be used as a main verb in a sentence okay look at first sentence i have a car okay so here have means that you own a car okay this shows the ownership i have a car so this is a main verb here okay i am having my lunch here having means eating okay so i am eating my lunch i am having my lunch so have is the main verb here and am is the helping verb okay so this way uh, have can also be used as a helping as well as the main verb in a sentence i hope you all have understood the difference between main and helping verbs okay so we can understand by its name only helping verbs so these verb help the main verb to complete a sentence or to make negative or interrogative sentences we very well know that verbs and different forms of verbs are very important in english language we cannot construct a sentence without a verb so to use them we need to understand the difference between regular and irregular verbs so that we can know when to use each one if you use a wrong type of a verb then the sentence will not sound good and you will end up framing a grammatically incorrect sentence so let's understand regular and irregular verbs in detail so that we do not make any kind of mistakes while constructing sentences okay so here you can see that i have written some regular and irregular verbs so that you can understand in a better way okay so here we have base form which is first form we have done these forms we have used these forms in different types of tenses we have we know about first form second form and third form so basically these are the three forms we have okay so base form is also called first form or v1 first form of the verb past is v2 second form of the verb third form is also called past participle okay which is v3 then present third person you remember we have done first person second person and third person so here in present third person so what do we use if you can recall simple present tense so i told you with he she and it with third person third singular person in present tense simple present tense we use s es or ies in the end of the verb okay so this is all about that and last one is past participle which is a continuous form of the verb ing so here we have the verbs with ing except for stative verbs like hate um see okay because we know that we cannot use stative verbs in continuous forms okay so this is what it is so basically you have to understand these three forms v1 v2 and v3 okay so regular verbs let's talk about regular verbs first regular verbs are very easy to understand because they follow a pattern okay you just have to put ed in the end like study 
studied studied here okay then hate hated here e is already there so you just have to put an extra d so this is ed regular verbs they end with ed in v2 and v3 like second form and third form they have the ending with ed okay so this is what you have to remember so this is a pattern like finish finished finished like liked liked call called called okay so these are called regular verbs and very easy to remember because they follow a pattern but this is not the case with irregular verbs they are of different types okay for example you can segregate them in four groups okay so first group is like this cost 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 where all the three forms v1 v2 v3 are same okay cut 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 let 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 okay so this is one category next is bring brought brought where v2 and v3 are same then leave left left lose lost lost okay next is come came come okay so in this category v1 and v3 are same okay run ran run okay and the fourth one the last one do did done all three forms v1 v2 v3 all three forms are different give gave given see saw seen okay so these are you can learn irregular verbs like this so now there is no specific way to learn them to memorize them it can only be done through practice regular verbs are easy but for irregular verbs you need lots and lots of practice okay so just do that and i think you should not have any kind of problem next is transitive and intransitive verbs transitive verbs are those verbs which require an object to complete their meaning okay so in these kind of verbs you need an object okay otherwise they will sound incorrect or incomplete for example i bought an interesting book okay so now in this sentence i is the subject okay and bought is the verb and what did i buy an interesting book okay so this is an object a direct object you need a direct object okay so if you just imagine if you do not have the direct object in this sentence so how would this sentence sound i bought so don't you think it's incomplete i bought i bought what i'm going to buy i'm going to buy something i'm going to buy a book i'm going to buy a car okay but i'm going to buy that's incomplete so i bought it doesn't make any sense so you need a direct object here i bought an interesting book okay that's why bought is a transitive verb next is she likes chocolate so yeah here main verb is likes she is the subject and she likes what chocolate so this is a direct object okay so if you remove direct object then she likes what she likes him she likes her she likes chocolates okay he stole a necklace he is a subject stole a necklace stole is the verb and necklace is a direct object he stole what he stole a necklace so this is again a transitive verb i opened the door so i opened this is an incomplete sentence i opened what i opened the door so we need a direct object she invited me to the party she is the subject this is the verb and me is a direct object okay she invited me to the party all right so here you need to ask yourself what and who okay for example i bought what an interesting book she likes what chocolate she invited who me okay so like this in transitive verbs these verbs can't have a direct object after them 
because they express an action that is complete in itself okay they do not need a direct object to make sense all right let's go through some examples he cried a lot so if you say he cried a lot or he cried he cries that's a complete sentence you don't need a direct object here she stood in the corner she stood complete sentence a mango falls from the tree a mango can a mango fall something fall someone no okay so a mango falls from the tree this is not these are not the direct objects okay we are only talking about direct objects over here okay who or what so you don't need a direct object here okay a mango falls from the tree so this makes sense without a direct object so these are called intransitive verbs now there are some verbs which are both transitive and intransitive depending upon the sentence how let's see i stopped the car okay so here stop verb in this sentence stop verb is what you tell me is it transitive or intransitive because it has an object the car stopped what what or who all right so here i stopped what i stopped the car so we have a direct object so that means this is transitive here stop verb is transitive now in next sentence the car stopped here do we have a direct object no we just have a subject and the verb and it is a complete sentence it this sentence is making sense the car stopped suddenly okay so here in this sentence stop is an intransitive verb she speaks english so subject verb and direct object she speaks what she speaks english okay now in next sentence she speaks very fast i can't understand what she speaks because she speaks very fast okay so here there is no direct object then in this sentence speak is an intransitive verb he rang the bell so he rang what the bell direct object okay the bell rang loudly you do not have a direct object here you don't need it it is making sense the bell rang loudly okay so these kind of verbs can be transitive or intransitive depending upon the sentence okay so this is all about transitive and intransitive thank you for watching my videos if you find them helpful please like and share with your friends feel free to leave comments do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive a notification for the new videos thank you Take care and have a great day.